the charging plug has come all the way out of your lithium battery like this, uh, you're going to need to make a repair. It can be a little bit complicated, but if you follow along with these steps, it won't be too bad. Uh, first, you're going to need a screwdriver of some sort, a Phillips head screwdriver, razor knife, um, hot glue gun, small adjustable wrench, multimeter, and a soldering iron. And uh, then we can get started. When you start off, you want to remove the uh, four screws in the corner of your battery on the side that's got the charging plug on it. Uh, when you're putting these screws back in, these are going into thin-walled aluminum, so turn your torque, turn your torque way down in the screwdriver and don't, don't strip these out. Okay, when you get it loose, a new battery looks kind of like this. You'll notice that the uh, charging plug on here is caulked in place. Uh, you may have hot glue on yours, depending on when it was made, or you may have this, uh, this silicone caulk. Uh, we'll want to restore that when we're done. But before we can start working, if you have residues of, of caulk on the end there, you, you'll want to cut them out with, with your knife. Um, the other thing that you need to do before you touch anything inside is open up this fuse holder and there's a bladed automotive fuse in here. You have to remove this. Um, you do not want to short the battery out. If your plug has come all the way out, this fuse may be popped already uh, because of these wires touching. The black wire could come loose if the plug falls out. Uh, so before you cut the caulk off, pull your fuse out for safety. And uh, then on your multimeter, dial up resistance and uh, put it over either end of your fuse here and double check to see if the fuse is damaged. See right now I am uh, getting a reading of one which is a good sign. If, uh, if you see open line or something like that, that is, that is no good. Your fuse is gone in that case. Um, but if you, have, uh, if you have a good low resistance reading then your fuse is fine. So in this case I'm getting zero which is good. So this fuse is good. I can also visually see that the fuse is not burned. Uh, once you have this open, I'm going to switch to my damaged end cap here where I've also taken the wires out to make it a little easier to see. So inside, Inside here you have a number of things. So, most importantly we've got the fuse out so it's nice and safe. You see that we have a washer on the outside. See this washer? You've got to find that washer. You're going to need it. And that's going to uh, back this up so it fits okay in the hole and doesn't pop through. Restore that washer. Find your ring terminal for the ground conductor. And again, make sure that fuse is out, otherwise it's going to short out when you put it back in place. Slip, the, slip this down, and when the ring terminal touches the red here, you would get a short, unless uh, you've pulled the fuse out, in which case you'll be safe. And uh, slip it all the way down there. You're going to want a lock washer. Slip the lock washer on. And, you know, all these parts should hopefully be safely inside your battery. Um, they can't really come out even if it's come totally loose. They should be inside there somewhere. So we've got the lock washer on and then we have a nut and we're going to slip the nut on and start threading it in place. Now if it's been rattling around for a while or if it came loose because it got pulled on or there was a crash or something like that, one of these wires could be damaged. Uh, so once you get this nut on safely we just want to check those wires and see how things look. Okay, so we've got the nut on finger tight and we can look at these wires and we see that the wires are firmly soldered in place. If the wire is coming loose, you've got to re-solder it. Uh, once you've got it, Resoldered. 
You can take your small adjustable wrench or something like that, and you want to tighten this nut down pretty well. You don't want to strip it out, but it's got to be tight enough that there's no movement. And uh, it takes patience here because it's hard to get in. You need a small tool, um, a small pair of pliers might be handy for this as well. And you want to tighten it on down. Once you get it good and tight, you can add an extra safety measure by bending the ground wire up very carefully. You don't want it to be touching the red wire, but if you bend it up a little bit, you can lock it against the nut there so the nut can't turn. And then you want to take your hot glue and uh, you want to glue this all up so it can't move. There's one other test that is worth doing before you're done. Uh, you can put the fuse back in the fuse holder. You can see my fuse holder here. You put the fuse back in the fuse holder. And get your multimeter out and put it on voltage. And you'll be in the uh, 200 volt DC range on most meters. And we just want to check the, uh, the red and black connection. And we can do it from the outside here even. And turn it around and we very carefully get our red probe down inside. And our black probe on the outside and you see we're getting 38 volts which is real good for a 36 volt battery it's about right um, it should be higher when it's charged be 42 43 volts and upwards um, a 48 volt battery is going to be 54 57 volt range so we know that's good and uh, if it's all testing fine and we've got it nice and tight here again just by uh, holding the outside of the plug very carefully with the fuse out, holding it. Make sure the fuse is out whenever you're tightening this. And uh, finger tighten first. Then we slip our wrench on and very slowly tighten it up. And grab a small pair of pliers and show that as well. These needle nose guys may make this easier to reach in here. You see, I'm just grabbing that and tightening it on up. Right in there. Just going to tighten this nut all the way until it's secure. And then once it's uh, good and tight, I can bend the ring terminal out slightly carefully being careful not to break it or to touch the red wire so that it puts a little bit of tension on the nut and locks into place. And then once we've tested our voltage, we just get our glue gun and we want to caulk this up tight. It keeps the water out and it keeps the nut from turning. And so you can see the glue gun is just getting plenty of glue on there. Then we give it time to dry. And uh, Put our fuse back in. If our fuse turned out to be blown, you can go to a place like an AutoZone, something like that, get a replacement fuse. They'll have one for you. Five amps should be fine. Um, but if you take that one in, they'll be able to match it. And then before we close everything back up, put our red in the center conductor. And we carefully place our black against the outside. Make sure that we've got voltage. And then we're good. Now, again, when you're closing this up, be very careful to get the wires in safely, not pinched. Get our screws in. Turn your torque way down so you don't strip the screws. And then uh, get the screws finger tight, each of them. Then when you've got all four in finger tight, you can tighten them down fully. 
being careful not to strip them. Now we have a good looking plug here. It's all buttoned up. If it turned out you uh, couldn't find some of the parts, they fell out somehow, then these are regular RCA plugs. You get parts for them at Radio Shack generally. Uh, thank you.